Welcome to Horror Boys. It's a podcast on the internet. I'm Austin, joined as always by... Chris. And you can't see our face if you're watching this on YouTube. Don't worry, but don't check your screen. It's just today there's no faces, because Chris doesn't have a camera right now. Not yet, but I will. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't worry. Horror Boys will have cameras going forward at some point. Just There might be like one more episode without it. Probably not, though. Um, but yeah, we're back. It's a, if you, what is Horror Boys? It's a horror movie review podcast where every week we review a horror movie. And by every week, I mean when we do. Get used to it. Yeah, when it <laughs> when it happens, because it won't be every week from now on. No, probably. it won't. That's, our, I guess, our first announcement. Um, horror Boys is switching to a bi-weekly, and we're not talking twice a week. We're talking every other week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're having trouble getting out one a week, so we're going to do two a week now. <laughs> Yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but actually, we're not even talking about a horror movie tonight. Because it's the end of year podcast. Which means we're talking about a year in horror. Um, That's right. Uh, first question, which isn't as funny. I found that out on a different podcast we filmed. How was your Christmas? Uh, you, you know, weird, different yeah. uh, from really any other Christmas I've had. Uh, celebrated uh, technically before even Thanksgiving happened. Yeah. Because um, my parents were heading back to, to Thailand. And uh, so we decided to knock it all out in one go. And uh, we did. And it was, uh, it was all right. It was pretty good. I had Thanksgiving slash Christmas food leftovers for a week. And I ate them happily. And now I'm out <laughs> and I am very sad. Fair. Um, the, the peek behind the curtain for everyone, we filmed this podcast before Christmas, um, even though it's coming out to you after Christmas. Um, and I, I rate that question every year because I, we normally film it before and I like to mess with Chris. Um, and then, uh, he actually already celebrated Christmas this year. So it actually only messes with me. Um, <laughs> I, love uh, it. <laughs> I don't, I'm sure I got some, a couple cool horror things. Well, find out and i'm getting a cool chair though i know about that what, is it a scary chair it's very spooky it's got uh it's a recliner ah does it have lumbar support i don't know because it's a recliner chris oh true <laughs> it's a couch um so possibly yeah probably if i'm sitting in it properly which i probably won't be half the time yeah, I've never sat in my chair properly. I'm currently slouched uh, very, very much in my chair. <laughs> um, see, I'm just sitting not near the back of my chair because that makes me lean too far back. Mm. But yeah, um, so there was the how was your Christmas question. <laughs> yeah. uh, now it's time for favorite horror movie of 2023. Or favorite horror movies or... Maybe a favorite, ho- actually, no, his favorite horror movie of 2023 it has to come out in 2023 or at least be released widely in 2023. Because I have one that technically came out in 2022 but was released widely in 2023. Uh, uh, I accidentally said mine in the last podcast. He did. Uh, they don't, so now they, I'm going to say they definitely it on purpose. Didn't see that. Yeah, definitely, probably not. Uh, it was uh, Talk to Me. Mm. Um, new A24 film. Um, a movie I was originally very skeptical of because the premise seemed really, really played out and dumb. Uh, and it turned out to be a pretty fresh take on a possession horror and was really well done. And the actors, despite all being uh, pretty much new new talents, except for uh, the mother whose name I cannot remember, um, we're all really excellent, to be honest, hmm. uh, with gore that was like a lot, but not excessive, uh, and like really well done. Uh, it all felt like it had its place. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just a, a, a really surprising delight to watch, uh, especially considering it was done by two first time directors. Well, I guess not first time because they did have a YouTube channel, which also set off red flags for me. I was like, oh, surely not two YouTubers <laughs> could direct a good horror film. Hey, uh, whoa, I want to make can. a horror film someday, so don't say that. Yeah, we, we could be good directors, who knows? Yeah, maybe, or not. Yeah, prob- probably Give not, us money, but who knows? 
Uh, <laughs> that's your horror movie uh, of 2023. Last horror movies of 2023. I have two answers. Um, I'll start with the one that you. technically doesn't isn't true, but was uh, is. I think I somehow talked about this last year though somehow, because I think maybe it actually got released earlier than it says on the internet. Um, mm. But uh, I want to talk about Sick. Sick was great. Um, yeah, still haven't watched it, but yeah. he has talked a lot about it. I have talked about Sick. I don't remember if I talked about it on the this podcast or a different <laughs> podcast last year. Uh, Sick is great. Um, it's uh, made by my boy Kevin Williamson. Um, my boy, I don't know him personally at all, but I love his work. But we are fans. Of I am a yeah. big fan of Kevin Williamson's work, and it is awesome. It's uh, not as good as you know Scream, obviously, but it is very good. Um, very fun. Um, the best. Uh, I don't know. If, are we still not allowed to say the C word on? Oh, well, probably not. No. The pandemic. We'll call. The, I think that's safe. Yeah. Um, it's a pandemic movie, and so it's probably not evergreen, um, but it is still really good. Um, <laughs> uh, then also, uh, as we already mentioned, it's not as good. I'm a Scream guy. I'm a big Scream fan. Um, Scream is my favorite horror franchise of all time. The first Scream is my favorite horror movie of all time. And man, did I really enjoy Scream 6. Um, yeah. Some people didn't. Yeah. Uh, and I understand it was different. It was definitely very different than the other screams, but I thought that was a welcome difference. I really enjoyed it. Um, I loved the New York setting was amazing. I thought it really helped the movie. Um, yeah, I really liked Scream 6, uh, and I'm really disappointed with the studios for screwing up everything for Scream 7. I honestly haven't heard anything about that. Um, so I would love to know. Oh, Chris, uh, uh, we probably are not getting Scream get... Seven. We are. Just oh. it's going to be completely reworked because Jenna Ortega will not be in it because hers is due to um, just conflicts with the schedule. Schedule, yeah, because oh. she's blown up. Um, and then yeah. Melissa Barrera, who uh, did great in Scream Six. Um. Uh, how, how do I want to tackle this topic? Because it is a sensitive topic. Uh, oh. She was supportive of Palestine. Ah. Uh. And was... The, her bosses said they do not support any anti-Semitism and therefore let her go. Um, gotcha. I've, I could be wrong because I have not... I do not like follow her on social media, not see every post she made, but the posts I saw, I did not personally agree that there was anything anti-Semitic in what she said. But it's a sensitive topic, and I'm not going to dwell on it, but yeah, she's gone. Um, that is very unfortunate. Yeah, um, there is talks, though, that this might cause them to bring back Sydney, which could be fun. Uh, I love Sydney. Um, but I also really loved the core four story they were going with, and now half uh, of the core four will not be there. So I kind of hope that they don't even bring out any of them because nothing against the other two. They do they did great, but they, I mean, they are brother and sister, so maybe you could tell some sort of story with them and some other people. <clears throat> yeah, but I am I am not as looking forward to Scream Seven as I would have been. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, But they, I don't think that's coming and out next year, especially with uh, another thing I guess we can talk about very briefly uh, that kind of changed up everything and will probably change up a lot of what's coming out next year that was supposed to to what is. Um, the strike is finally over. Um, yeah, the SAG after strike is As is well as no the um, uh, SAG, is, SAG and the Writers Guild. Writers Guild ended like a week or two before the SAG one. Might have been a month, but... <laughs> That kind of messed up everything for the year. A lot of things didn't get made that were supposed to. But it is needed over. to happen. And so. Yeah, oh, absolutely. 100%. I am... don't want to, you know, mix our message up. Uh, we are supportive of Screw what happened. Screw the AMPTP. That has been my message since day one, and it is still my message, even though they finally relented and gave yeah. what they needed finally. to. Finally. Jeez yeah. Louise. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, Scream 7, I'm worried about it, uh, but I'll still see it, because I'm like a Scream concerns. guy. I'm such a Scream yeah. guy that I will definitely see it. But yeah, the point of this one was favorite horror movie of the year, which for me was Scream 6. Six. 
which I really loved. Very good movie. It was, yes. Uh, We covered it on the podcast this year. Um, We did. So go watch that episode if you haven't. And then here's another question, which I don't know if I have an answer for this year. But I'll see if I can think of. I have a couple, actually, yeah. Hit me with your best shot. Uh, Favorite horror movies you've watched for the first time this year. So it doesn't have to be new, but it can be. That weren't discussed on Horror Boys. Ooh, that weren't discussed yeah. on Horror Boys. Uh, <laughs> did actually watch some movies on. Ooh, God, Shutter. Uh, mm-hmm. shouts out to Shutter. Absolutely, you're welcome. Um, I think when Evil Lurks was pretty great. Um, say again, another possession movie. Um. Very different take on a possession movie as well. Um, yeah, d- d- you, definitely something you'd have to watch to to fully grasp the, okay. <laughs> the all of what's going on in there. Uh, but really cool, lots of really really cool gore. Uh, I honestly think you might enjoy it just for that, if nothing else. I, uh, I highly recommend. Gore. I'm a gore hound. Yeah. Anyone who is a gore hound, I would highly recommend you watch this. Uh, oh, the ginger dead man is on Shutter right now. Oh, uh, that's not a good movie, but I'm sure it's fun. No, no, it has Gary Busey. It does have Gary Busey. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm trying to think. Of Did you watch Pony Pool? Else. Did you like Pony Pool? I did watch Pony Pool, and I think. Hold on, I have to remember what Pony Pool was. That's the one uh, about like the zombie esque virus that has to do with sound. Ooh. Like if you hear them talking, you get you get the virus. Oh yeah, that was actually really really good. Uh, very much like a low budget movie. Oh yeah. Um. I've watched a lot of zombie esque media this year. Uh, but that one was, I think, conceptually, probably one of my favorites, to be honest. Mm. Uh, thank you for reminding me that it existed. Uh, because I, I do enjoy radio and the concept of radio. Uh, and the whole movie revolves around, uh, this radio, uh, radio station. Mm -hmm. Takes place in this radio station. Um, and it's really cool how they just like reveal everything that's happening and they're not sure if what's happening outside is real or not because they're getting like reports from people on the streets it's super cool highly recommend you watch it as well um probably more so than when evil lurks at least for for me I would, uh yeah I'm trying to remember what we watched for my birthday this past year you know great question um Oh, actually, I think I might remember. I think we mm. might have watched. Um, oh, I forgot the name of the director or the name of the movie. It's the one that everyone was really looking forward to that a lot of people loved that you and me did not. Mm. What was it called? Oh, yeah. Pool. Infinity Pool. Infinity Pool. That's yeah, not on my movie list of movies we didn't pretty... cover. Yeah, I was not a fan opinion. of people. People loved it, so I need to rewatch it at some point just to see. Blood and Honey released it. No, it didn't. We watched it last year. I'm confused. Maybe it got a second release. Maybe. Infinity Pool was January 27th, 2023, so that would have been. That sounds about right. Oh, M. Thregan was great. Um, we did not cover that, but I really enjoyed that when I watched <clears> it. <throat> I thought that was right. I mean, I, did you watch which version did you watch? Uh, the one that was on the streaming service. Well, they were both on the streaming service I watched it on, but I watched the uncut version that had more gore. I don't know if I watched the uncut That's version. Right. I might have. Um, I liked them three again. I thought it was the it was a fun enough movie. It was. I don't know. I like. I'm not. I don't love it. It's not like my. It's one of my favorite movies. We didn't talk about because I didn't watch a lot of movies. We didn't talk about. Yeah. Uh, least favorite movie that we didn't talk about is actually really tough because both Infinity Pool and Fear came out in January. 
Um, <laughs> those movies both sucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, they did. Um, uh, one that is not going to be on a, a recent. Oh, uh, I actually really enjoyed. Um, not really enjoyed. I enjoyed. Why well, am I blanking on it? Uh huh. This is the point where we should edit this, but like we talk about every episode, I don't edit. Um, so, oh crap. Well, before I while I think about this one, I'll mention that I watched The Babadook and uh, enjoyed it. <clears throat> that was fun. Yeah, it's yeah, a good movie. It's a good movie. It, I will say the reason I watched The Babadook was because I watched a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror that parodied The Babadook, and I was like, I should watch The Babadook. Um, <laughs> and um, the parody did a really good job ruining everything about the movie um it was still good but every twist or turn i knew was coming because of the simpsons the parody simpsons Oops. parody <laughs> thanks simpin yeah thanks simpsons. a lot simpin simpsons ruined that for me um and then <sighs> five nights at freddy's was better <clears throat> than i expected yeah it wasn't like was... great but it was no. still good which i was kind of expecting crap I was expecting pretty hot garbage. So it wasn't hot garbage. So uh, when it wasn't garbage, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that it wasn't yeah, garbage. I don't know if I necessarily cared for like the aunt subplot that happened, but aside from that, pretty good. I don't remember what you're talking about. The aunt trying to take the sister away. Oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> Completely unnecessary. Uh um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot better than I think me or Austin expected it to be. Yeah. Uh, now it's time to talk about movies coming out next year. And normally we just kind of bring up one or two that we're interested in, but I had really trouble remembering what it was coming out next year. So I looked up a list and we're actually going to get discuss pretty much every movie on that list if we're looking forward to it or not. Um, yeah. so shout outs to screen rant. Let me give credit to the actual writer of the article. Cooper hood. <clears throat> Thanks Cooper hood. Yeah. For this Hopefully lovely you're not compact AI, list. Because sometimes you are. <laughs> oh. You never know. I don't know if Screen Hopefully Rant is not. accused of that. Um, first movie on this list, Night Swim. I've seen some trailers. It looks okay. Yeah. I saw it, some trailers that made me go, ooh, this looks fun. And then I saw it was a PG-13 horror movie, and I went, hmm. Hmm, yeah. I don't know. Never, or not never, not usually a good sign no, for but, horror movies. Don't get me wrong, I did watch the uncut version, but in general, M3 is a PG-13 movie, and I don't think the couple seconds of added gore really changed the movie, and I enjoyed it. So, I enjoyed Five Nights at Freddy's, so... I did also enjoy... I Also, I'll say it, gorier than I expected it, oh, yeah. which is to say at all. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, so, I will maybe give Night Swim a chance. I feel like that, for me, is definitely a streaming movie. Yeah, I'm, um, I'll watch it, but it's not something I am, like, gonna go out of my way to, yeah. to see in theaters. Uh, then we have Imaginary, which I know nothing about and haven't even heard of it. Not to be um, confused with Imaginary Friends, different movie. Yeah, it, it comes from the director Jeff Wadlow, who has not a good track history at all when it comes to horror movies. Uh, he directed Truth or, Truth or Dare. Dare. And Fantasy Island. I've never even heard of Fantasy Island. Both of which I do believe are uh, critically not well received, as well as not well received at all by fans. Yeah. <laughs> so, huh. not not promising signs yeah. for Imaginary. Um, but who but, knows? You know, if I hear good things, I'll maybe give it a chance. Yeah. Uh, next we have Baghead, which um, is a feature-length directorial debut of a guy I've never heard of. He apparently directed a short film of the same name. So, obviously, oh. it was probably a pretty good short film if he got a movie out of it. Clearly. Um, once again, know nothing about it. So, <laughs> this this does, I don't know, this, this smells of sleeper hit. It very um, well could be. Uh, the brief description will... is that it follows a man named Kevin who encounters a shape-shifting witch known as Baghead. Who can give him answers to what he seeks? Interesting. Uh, this is either going to be really good, or, or terrible. Or Chris will think it's really good, and I'll think it's art house garbage. Ooh, I don't even know if it'll be art house garbage, honestly. <laughs> it feels art housey to me. 
It could be. But who knows? <laughs> uh, next on our list, we have A Quiet Place Day One. And I on my seen scale the first of A Quiet Places. Oh. They're, they're all right. I'd those say are they're definitely horror cool. Movies. Those are other PG 13 horror movies that are some people like. They're cool creature flicks. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm on a, like a 5.5 on excitedness to see this movie. Okay, I'll, I'll absolutely watch it. Well, hear me out. This might actually help elevate this for you. John Krasinski is not directing it. He is being replaced by pig director Michael Sarnowski. All right. Put it up to an 8.5. <laughs> you must say, I, I know you really liked pig. That movie. <laughs> so he's the one directing it this time around. Pig is absolutely one of my favorite movies of all time. And it is the director of pig is now directing the quiet place prequel. Ooh. Maybe um, we'll get a little bit more of a uh, story-driven film this time. Maybe he's only the director, so he can. Only Which do with a prequel, you would hope for that. Just... Yeah, but you can also only do with what he's given as a, as a right. writer. Right, right. Oh, it's also being led by Lup uh, Lup Lupita Nyong'o. She's a good actress. Ooh. And oh, and Alex Wolf from Hereditary. Let's go. I do like that. And also from Pig. <laughs> Uh, Stranger Things, Joseph Quinn. I, I, I've seen Stranger Things, but the name Joseph Quinn doesn't jump out to me. I'm sure oh, we'll go. Oh, it's him. Yeah, no, it's um Eddie Munson. Oh yeah. Hm. Okay, now um, this is a decent cast. That is a really solid cast. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of intrigued by A Quiet Place Day One. <laughs> Maybe that. Yeah, I might be watching the prequel. I might be watching the prequel before I watch the rest of the franchise. Well, it all makes sense chronologically. Speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next on this list is the Radio Silence monster thriller. So we don't have a name for it yet. Yeah, but untitled. It's, but it's Radio Freaking Silence. Um, as we already established, I love Scream, and I love their two Scream edition. It, I think Scream 2022 is my second favorite Scream movie behind the original. Um, Fair enough. Uh, and I've heard amazing things about Ready or Not, even though I have not seen it. That um, is a good movie. So a monster monster Lots movie of fun. for Universal made by them. Uh, it's Oh, it's got... With Melissa Barrera. Melissa Barrera. Because <laughs> uh, Radio Silence said, we don't care. <laughs> or it was filmed before. Or, yeah, or that. Very likely is... Uh, well, Dan Probably Stevens, the case. I don't know who Dan Stevens, Catherine Newton, Catherine Newton sounds familiar, and, oh, the late Angus Cloud is also set to appear. Mm. So yeah, this Should was filmed a while ago, because it has uh, someone who is no longer with us, so. And for number 28. Return to Silent Hill. Yeah, a movie that really doesn't have any business being made after the, well, I should say lack of success of the past Silent Hill movies. <laughs> Uh, um, this is based specifically off of Silent Hill 2. Um, mm, the story which I do is, believe is a lot of people's favorite Silent Hill game. Well, that's the one it's based off of. And you got the main actor is going to be Jeremy Irvin. Or Irvine, probably. Yeah, sure. Uh, also has Hannah Emily Anderson of Jigsaw in it. And who is this director? Did we not even get a director? Not in this article, no. Not in this not article. For... Uh, yeah, I, oof, I'll probably watch it, but again, this is probably something I'll most likely just end up streaming. I'm surprised it's coming to theaters and isn't just Netflix, straight to Netflix, honestly. Yeah. This screams straight to Netflix to me. Yeah. But it's getting a theatrical release, which maybe means that it is better. Typically. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we next, we have see. our first of two movies by M. Night Sh Oh, wait, no, it's not. The Watchers is not made by M. Night Shyamalan. It's made by his daughter, oh. Shauna Shyamalan. She's making her directorial debut with this movie, starring Dakota Fanning. Oh. Okay. Um, also includes uh, Georgina Campbell of Barbarian. I did like um, her in that movie. There's no actual information about what this movie A is. Lot. Um, but it's got, I like Dakota Fanning. Um, I am intrigued by a second generation director making a movie. Yeah. If, if they, are they trying to be their father or not? Cause I would so, have to presume probably not. You never know though. 
You, well, yeah, you truly do not. Will there be a twist is the question. Will the Watchers have a twist? Uh, the question we all need to know, because, hey, um, Miss, I forgot his name, but Infinity Pool guy, uh, he is somewhat at least trying to follow his dad, Cronenberg. Yeah. They both are trying to do body horror. He's not doing it as well. Uh, no. But <laughs> no. I'll say People it. love that not movie. Not. People love <laughs> Infinity Pool. It was That's crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, next on the list is Horoscope. Uh, with which a a name like that really just screams, uh, like soulless cash cow. To be honest, that feels like a Blumhouse. Like we're just pooping this out as fast as we humanly can. Absolutely uh, possible, but it does star Jacob Battalion, who I do like. Jacob or Batal ba Batalon. Batalon, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I like him in the Spider Man movies. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of natural charisma. Yeah, so I'm 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 intrigued by him getting his own movie um it's being directed and written by the director of expendables 4 <laughs> hmm. as well as anna hell has two directors oh sorry his directorial debuts of writers spencer cohen of expend fordables and anna helberg who has no credits that they've decided to talk about um, i think this is just her directorial debut there's no sense of writers spencer so she's also oh. written something, just not also expensive. Right, yeah. huh. uh, uh, starring also... a cast of people I have never heard. But that doesn't before. mean it's, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> of um, Umberly Gonzalez, Alwyn uh, Fuer, maybe Alana Bowden, and others, and others. Mm -hmm. But it's being carried by Jacob Batalon, or Bat Batalon. I don't know his name. Sorry, guy. I like your work. I think you're funny. I've also seen you on some podcasts. You're funny all mm -hmm. out of script as well. So yeah. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued because he's in it. I, I need to see some trailers. And it's not coming out till June of next year, so there's no trailers, I'm assuming yet. Yeah. Um, once I see a trailer, I will either go, uh, or I'll go, oh. <laughs> yeah. His I'm name attached towards mm. his <laughs> name attached makes me go, I want to see this trailer. There is hope for it. Yeah. That's 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 where I'll leave it with him. Is his name makes me go? I want to see the trailer. That's it. He might suck. Uh, it might suck. Not him. The movie might suck. Yeah. Um, next we have his trap, which is uh, M Night Shyamalan is back. Woo. Man. Yeah. Um, there is little confirmed about what trap will be about, other than a tease that it's more of a psychological thriller, set at a concert. Based. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And it'll probably be some sort of twist, because it's M. Night Shyamalan. Of course. And uh, apparently there's also no cast confirmed yet. But it's not coming out until August 2nd. So there is still quite a bit of time. Yeah. Uh, but also the release date not, might get pushed. Really not because, that much, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, the release date probably will get pushed. Um, That's my guess on that. We'll see if that even comes out next year. Next we have a Speak No Evil, which is a Danish movie... Uh, rem it's a remake of a, da a 2022 Danish movie. I think I have watched that movie okay. on Shudder. Okay. Yeah, I have. <laughs> okay. Well, and uh, boy howdy, if it's anything similar to the original, that is going to be a very, very bleak movie. And that's all, all right. I can say. But well, I, well, our director well, being James Watkins, who's done a black mirror episode i'm feeling like it's gonna be bleak <laughs> uh also starring james mcavoy james McAvoy. mackenzie davis and scott McNary in the lead roles and i will say that while james mcavoy has not been in a lot of great movies i have pretty much enjoyed his performance in every single one i mean and yeah so i, mean, I, I am going to say james mcavoy i, I get this. excited i think of yeah like him and his split is carried by him yeah and True. i like split um i do enjoy split a lot uh, yeah. next we have his alien romulus alien new Fantasy alien Back. movie yeah um for the the seventh installment guy not directly connected to them through remain re returning characters <laughs> yeah it's just a new standalone oh, alien movie. i know that name that name sounds familiar, Fede Alvarez. 
Isabella Merced of Transformers The Last Night and Kaylee Spency of Bad Times of the L. Royale. There's three directors. Interesting. Hmm. Um, the plot details have not been confirmed, but Disney and 20th Century Fox have an August 16th theatrical release planned. Who's Fede Alvarez? That name sounds very familiar. Uh, all I'm going to say is after the last Alien movie, uh, my hopes are not super high. <laughs> oh! Uh, this will either help or hurt, because you got some mixed bag here. Fede Alvarez okay. is did the Evil Dead remake, which I've heard amazing things about. Yep. Don't breathe. Good. Also, pretty solid. To Don't be breathe too. Ugh. Haven't watched it. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. So he's got a mixed bag. Uh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, he also so has some nice. really good stuff in there. So it's very possible this could be this could a be really good. solid horror. This might be the first good alien movie since like aliens. Aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I'm Fede Alvarez. I knew I recognized the name. He has a mixed bag, so I don't know if I'm excited or not. But I think he's another name that makes me go, let me see that trailer. <laughs> and uh, speaking next of is Beetlejuice 2. Yeah, a sequel that no one saw coming in 2023. No. Uh, Tim Burton returns to direct. So that's great. Michael Keaton's reprising the role. That's also great. It is. Renona, Renona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara are also returning. While Jenna Ortega is going to be headlining it. Long... And Willem Dafoe is Willem also Dafoe? going to show up. Okay, you know what? I'm in. I'm 100% yeah. in. No, right. yeah, I was yeah, already me. I was already pretty in, but off of just Jenna Ortega, but everyone's returning practically, and we're throwing in Willem Dafoe, yeah, it Monica sound Bellucci, like a and Justin Thoreau. I don't know who they are. Those names don't ring a bell. Monica Bellucci. Justin Thoreau. I'll look up. Uh, he has been in a myriad of movies here and there and shows. Okay. Monica Bellucci has also had a pretty extensive career. Um, she was in Irreversible, which I've heard of. Mm. Um, she's an Italian actress. I don't specifically recognize any of the movies like very specifically that she's been in though personally like she's in matrix reloaded and specter but i, I bet those are both smaller roles because uh, maybe she's a bond girl <laughs> he apparently gained recognition for his work with director david lynch in the mystery film uh mulholland drive oh okay in I've 2001 heard of, i've heard of mulholland drive and the horror film Inland Empire. He's an American Psycho as well. He is, but I don't think he's got a very prominent role in that movie. He's also on the TV show Six Feet Under. There and go. Uh, so yeah, uh, needless to say, definitely highly anticipated oh, for probably a lot of people. I thought I was. In, I thought I was interested in that movie, and then I kept reading, and I got more interested. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're in. Yeah, uh, number twenty-one. Smile too. Uh, I mean, I, I genuinely really enjoyed the first Smile movie. Did not expect to. Um, it also uh, has Kyle Gar Gallner in it, and I like Kyle Gallner. So, I don't know if I remember who Kyle Gallner is. Um, the only movie I can remember off the top of my head that he's in that you have seen, he's terrible in. So, oh, cool. He's in um, he was in the original Smile apparently. Uh, he was in. Uh, Jennifer's body. Um, he's in Scream. He play in the twenty twenty two. He plays the like. No, oh, yeah, ghost, ghost. okay. He's also in Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. though, which is the yeah, one that yeah. came to my mind immediately. But he's a good actor. Uh, I like. Him. I saw his face and I immediately recognized. Yeah, him. no, he's yeah, a good he, actor. He actually he was is trying, in the original in Nightmare on Elm Street. He actually tried his butt off. He was the only one trying. It still was not he good, is, but he very tried. good at playing a paranoid, scared man. Mm. Uh, and also, yeah, very good at just being emotionally expressive in movies. I don't recognize the other names. Uh, oh, Rob, actually, and... Robin Weigert sounds familiar. We have uh, Marty Madalus uh, returning as the Smile Monstrosity. Uh, no, she doesn't. I have no idea who Robin Weigert is. And Parker Finn is directing the sequel as well. Uh, so, it could be good also. 
uh, there's definitely parts of that movie that could have been better. Uh, hopefully, yeah. he improves instead of uh, you know make, making certain certain mistakes yet again. But I will almost certainly probably watch it this time in theaters instead of on train. And also, oh, okay, I have seen him before. Uh, Jesse T. Usher, who I believe is the son of Usher. Oh. Maybe not. He's the son of Jesse T. Usher Sr., sorry. My bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was in the original Smile. Um, is also and he's the also the Independence Day <laughs> Resurgence, Shaft. Yeah, that's A-Train. <laughs> huh? I said, that's A-Train. Yeah. I feel like that's really all we got to say. I mean, uh, he's are... also in Independence Day Resurgence? I want to temper people's expectations. Probably. Okay? No, he is. Uh, yeah, number 20, sure? we got Mystery, Jordan Peele movie coming out December 25th. That's all we know. <laughs> yeah, that's really all you have to say for me. That's yeah, a that's Jordan fair. Peele movie. I will watch it. I still have not seen <laughs> any of his films. Is that true? Yeah. Dog, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. Maybe we just need to schedule a hangout and watch some of his maybe. films because, like, a lot of them are available to stream right now. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's our New Year's Eve plans. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> True. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm sure it'll be good, or it won't be, depending on your opinion on his movies. Because I feel like you either love them or you don't like them. I feel like there's no in between really on Jordan Peele movies. Yeah, I've definitely heard some maybe. people who are detractors, and then the majority are lovers of his work. Um, so it's going to be a, probably another Jordan Peele movie and it's coming out in Christmas. So people are speculating that it could be a Christmas themed movie, but there's well, no confirmation it, it on that. Well, it won't probably be another, it will absolutely be another Jordan Peele movie because that's who's directing the film. I, I, and on to number 19. <laughs> and then we got a drift. <laughs> With Jared Leto in it. Oh, but it's uh, also got Darren Aronofsky as the director. Interesting. Of, of like a rec- what it's the first time they've worked together since Requiem for a Dream. It's uh, based off of a short story by Koji Suzuki, and the movie is set to be produced by Blumhouse. That's about all we know. Um, <laughs> he's a good actor. He just as long as you give him good work. Yeah, he, so he absolutely has the grounds but he's also, to be a good actor. He also is, I think, co-directing this. So interesting. I think. All right, that's what I'm at least reading from the way. That, or it's just them working together again. I well, know. Requiem for a Dream, from what I've heard, is a <laughs> genuinely good movie. Yeah, so, so there's a, Darren, I've heard, I think potential. Darren Aronofsky is a loved director. Yeah, very, so, very solid potential for this movie. Yeah, this movie could be good. Uh, then we got another movie that, who knows if it'll be good. We got The Crow <laughs> reboot. Yeah. A uh, new adaptation of The Crow is finally going to materialize. Um, the latest take... Coming from Rupert Sander or Rupert Sanders of the Foundation and Ghost in the Shell, I have to presume the live action remake. I would assume, um, and also, but to, it does see yeah. Bill Skarsgård as Eric Draven. Interesting. That does intrigue me. It. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. No. Actually, okay. I'm I'm intrigued. Bill Skarsgård is the crew. Um, we also have. From the spoilers. <laughs> it's also meant to star. Ah, oh, I mean, yeah. Is that a spoiler to say he's the crow? Uh, for people who haven't watched the crow at all, yeah, probably. Oh yeah, I guess. Which I haven't, but I, yeah, I, I, just, do I feel know. like everyone when I hear the name Eric Draven, I think of the crow. So, sorry. Yeah, it's also it's also meant to star Foundations Laura Byrne, Danny Huston, and formerly known as Twigs. Mm. Um, Liongate has yet to announce a specific release date, but the 2024 window has been confirmed. Uh, I like Bill Skarsgård in It, which is all I've seen him in, so I'm intrigued. Not... It could be... This is a movie, I feel like, when it comes to The Crow, it's either going to be great or it's going to be terrible. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Going to be just phoned in, but... Yeah. Uh, But who knows? Next we have is Dust Bunny... Which is a horror movie that is also a Hannibal TV show reunion of sorts, apparently. Uh, Ooh. director Brian Fuller has a new movie called Dust Money that should be ready to release sometime during this year. It follows a young girl who ha- who asks her neighbor to help her kill a monster under her bed. She thinks it ate her family. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen 
is attached to star in the movie with Sigourney Weaver also playing a major role. Okay. Yeah. The family, Promising casting. The family horror movie does ever so slightly make me go, okay, I'm not as excited, but I'm still intrigued. Yeah. It is going to be, it sounds like it's going to be a family-friendly horror film, which does, is not, does not mean bad, but does... I'm still intrigued. Not usually have yeah great implications but i am intrigued promising yeah uh next we have is faces of death uh, <laughs> which if i remember right, the faces of death originally like were books that were or, like movies that were like half fake half real <laughs> like depictions of death i'm assuming oh. this is completely a movie um uh, he apparently, that's being directed by Daniel Goldhaber, who apparently did Cam in 2018. Ooh. Uh, which has received excellent reviews. Also, he received excellent reviews for his crime thriller, How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Um, it will star the Euphoria actress Barbie Ferreria? Ferreira? Ferreira, yeah. Stranger Things' Dacry Montgomery. Who is, uh... Hot lifeguard guy. Yeah, it's Billy. Yeah, Billy. Saved by the Bells, Josie Toda. Singer Charlie XCX. Interesting. And The Blackening's Jermaine Fowler. It's a remake of the 1978 movie by the same name. Does not have a release date confirmed. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I like Dak. I, I liked Dak Graham Montgomery in Stranger Things. Same. I've heard that Euphoria has great acting, so I'm sure Barbie is a good actress. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how, how I feel about that. It's I, yeah, I think I it's don't a little weird that this is higher than some of the things on this list. Oh wait, no, it's in. At first, it was in like release date order, but still, I feel like for the unconfirmed ones, I feel like it's weird that this is so high. Fair. Um, then we got Heretic. Um, Scott Beck and Brian Woods return to the horror genre. The writers of A Quiet Place. Um, hmm. Oh, also did uh, the dinosaur movie 65. Um, are back with this. It's got hmm. Sophie Thatcher from Yellow Jackets and Chloe East from The Fablemen. Are playing. Uh, oh, and Hugh Grant's going to be a creepy older man. Ooh, I do enjoy Hugh Grant, and it's an A24 film, guys. Chris is in. I mean, yeah, it's an (laughs) A24 horror film. Uh, Next Um, we have is Immaculate, um, which is a reunion between Sidney Sweeney, who is the star, and the director Michael Mohan, and they work together on The Voyeurs. Uh, Immaculate Hmm. is going to follow a devout Christian and an Italian covenant who learns there are dark secrets hidden there. The movie marks a return to the horror and psychological thrillers for Sweeney, and she will share the screen with the White Lotus Season 2 standout, Simone Tabasco and Alvaro Morte of Wheel of Time. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I had seen trailers for this movie many moons ago. Uh like I might be mistaken, ago, but life is crazy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it looks interesting, and I will almost certainly watch it. Once again, Sydney Sweeney is um, a star of Euphoria, which I've heard has great acting, so I'm sure she's a decent actress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we have Long Legs. It's Nicolas Cage in a horror movie. I think that's enough I to will... get me to at least consider seeing it. Has I Micah Monroe from in theaters, It Follows. If I can. Um, yeah, I mean, this is intriguing. Uh, yeah. Um, it's... Then we got Maxine. It's a serial killer. Yeah. And Nicolas Cage is the serial killer. And I will be watching it. Then we Dance have down. Maxine, which is the finale of Ty West's horror trilogy. Um, I've only seen X, heard great things about Pearl, and I am very much looking forward to this. I do need to get around to watching Pearl. And but do I. <laughs> it has, I love uh, Mia Goth in everything but Infinity Pool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But then it also, in the cast, has Kevin Bacon and Halsey. Like, 
you got me, okay? Like, <laughs> Interesting. That's, that's the original Horror Boy alum, Kevin Bacon. Uh, <laughs> uh, then we have Never Let Go, which is... Um, stars Halle Berry and is directed by Alexander Aja, who did The Hills Have Eyes, as well as Crawl and Oxygen. Yeah. Which, <laughs> with movies like those, they'll it'll probably be at least decent. <laughs> yeah. Let's try to speed this up. I think we spent a little too much time on some of these earlier ones. Yeah. I guess it actually isn't that late. It felt later than it was. Uh, Robert, the next one is Nosferatu, which is a Robert Eggers movie. As we already talked about multiple times in this, that makes Chris very excited. It makes me go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I already talked about, I am not a fan of The Lighthouse. Um, I believe he also did The Vivitch, which I tried to watch and did not get through. Yeah, uh, this does have, however, an incredible cast. It does. It has Willem Dafoe, Bill Skarsgård, Anna Taylor Johnson, or sorry, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Nicholas Holt. Emma Corrin and Ralph Inneson. Um, and actually, Lily oh, Rose Depp in the lead, uh, lead role. It's not A24, which surprises me. It's Focus Features. Yeah, for, for Robert Eggers, it, it is He normally does. Oh, also, I, we missed that the lead role is uh, Lily Rose Depp. I did just say that, but that is totally fair that you did not hear me. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone knows, but Lily Rose Depp is starring in Nosferatu. Um, oh, for those of you who didn't hear, uh, Lily Rose Depp will but be now the, question uh, the lead is, role. Who is going to be Nosferatu, Willem Dafoe or Bill Skarsgård? Because either one of them sounds amazing for that role. That, yeah. I have to assume it's probably going to be Willem Dafoe just because he is older and but could probably Skarsgård pull off. But has such a, like, such good face acting. Yeah. Like, no, he, he does. He could do so good in some prosthetics for, well, for Nosferatu. Bill Skarsgård, I would say... Better facial acting, but Willem Dafoe absolutely still no. I'm not, yeah, no, I'm not at all knocking Willem Dafoe. I'm just saying I personally think I want Bill Skarsgård to get that role. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm torn, to be honest. That's really is between it, the Maybe two it's a me. situation where this will be a movie that's over a multiple timeline, like a, starts out before he's a Probably. vampire, and then maybe Bill Skarsgård and Willem Dafoe. We might get both. both. Yeah, maybe <laughs> both are Nosferatu. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, well, the more I've read about the cast, I'm a little bit more intrigued. I'm still, Robert Eggers' name does kind of scare me because I've seen yeah, one of his movies didn't like it. Huh? <laughs> I said it might be too art housey for Austin. Yeah. Uh, but but it's also no it. too, so I don't know how art housey you can get with that. I mean, I'm sure you can. I mean, I'd argue the first movie is like art house cinema before art house cinema was a thing because it was the only thing. I guess that's right. You know? <laughs> Uh, the next we have is The One. Um, it's Melissa Barrera's horror movie Dominance. Well, it was. Um, yeah. uh, well, but, no, because she's also starring in another movie. That's true. So, she has two so movies this year. released in 2024. But sadly, those might be some of her last big movies, for at least till some stuff blows over. We'll see. Yeah. Um, directed by Jackie Bradley. I don't know who that is, and it doesn't tell me anything about them. Um, yeah, we'll see if I can find anything about it. Uh, uh, keep reading. Apparently, uh, the one stars Nicholas Holt as the guy at the center of a dating show. Interesting. And apparently, okay, so Taylor, which is Melissa Barrera's character, um, becomes a contestant on a reality TV dating show to find love. Taylor's experience takes a turn as she gets down to the final three and becomes terrified of not finding love. Okay. This is intriguing. I don't know if he has any Fair enough. directorial... That, that might be a woman with a name Jackie with J-A-K-I. Oh, that's true. It is. Yeah. Uh, uh, known for The Last Fairy Treat and The Big Ask. None of which I have heard of. Me neither. Uh, so I have no input on them. But um, that is intriguing. Um, that plot sounds kind of fun. So I'm yeah. intrigued. Especially because like that Nicholas plot and doesn't... Melissa Barrera. And also, that plot doesn't sound like a horror movie which intrigues me even more yeah because usually that means it's, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be some fun. crazy insanity <laughs> going on yeah that sounds like it's gonna be fun um next we have a salem's lot remake yeah i mean it's a stephen king novel so i mean it, 
I'm, it might could be, be good, good, but it's uh, also from the director Gary Doberman of Annabelle Comes Home. Wasn't that the wasn't that the one Annabelle movie people like? No, it's the second one. Animal Creation is the one people like. Yeah. Uh, so not it really. Previously, it was supposed to come out in 2022 and 2023, but New Line eventually pulled it from the schedule altogether. Also, not a great sign for it. Maybe. To be fair, sometimes good movies will be finished and then just poof, they don't exist anymore. Yeah. I'm looking at you, uh, Warner Brothers. Tiki. Um, it stars, or the cast includes Spencer Treat Clark, Louis Pullman, Palau Asbeck, Alfred Woodard, Bill Camp, and others. 2024 could finally be the time for the movie to be released. So this be. probably isn't even coming out next year because it doesn't sound like there's probably even not. an official day on that at all. This uh, is just so I'm going to put that at a strong one out of ten. <laughs> yeah, because it's just probably not even coming out. Yeah, probably not. Um, then we have Shelby Oaks, which is um, a horror movie audience can expect to see. Um, it comes from popular YouTube movie cri- critic Chris Stuckman, who's making his directorial debut with the th- thriller about a woman looking for her long-lost sister and discovers a childhood imaginary demon is real. Uh, um, it stars Camille Sullivan and Sarah Der- Dern as sisters, while Keith David, I love Keith David, and Michael Beach are set to make appearances. There is no official release date, but it is expected to get a theatrical release. I like Chris Stuckman. I respect his opinions on movies, and hopefully he has directorial uh, prowess. Sarah uh, we'll Dern we'll see. Familiar. Who's Sarah Dern? Do I know Sarah Dern? Uh, I, know Sarah Dern. I know Keith David for sure. He's awesome. Again, don't know how much I love the premise of the movie. Uh, but as I have come to find out, that sometimes doesn't matter at all. It's true. Uh, next uh, we have I, something I that's talk to me. baffling that Truly. Is, exists yeah. is the Strangers trilogy. And this is not me knocking the Strangers franchise or anything. I haven't seen any of them. Um, uh-huh. But they're making three movies in all one set year. To release. Yeah. <laughs> How where each installment of the new trilogy will be released is unknown at this time. The new Strangers movies come from director Rennie Harlan, who directed Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master and apparently Exorcist The Beginning. He's like a guy who's known for more of his, like, these are going to be pretty movies. Mm. He was like a, at least, you know, 30 years ago. The complaint people had about Dream Master was that he is was a... Um, a music video director, oh. so he was going more scene by scene than actual story. I see. So this movie could be interesting. I don't know these movies. I don't. He also know. did Deep Blue Sea, Cliffhanger, and Die Hard Two. So maybe he did get. Maybe it's more. Maybe he. You know, let's be fair. Maybe the, maybe he's just a director at this point, which is fair. I think he might just be a director at this point. He, uh, next he have... has done a lot of movies. Yeah. Next is Terrifier Three. Um. I've only heard really good things about Terrifier 2. Mixed bag on Terrifier 1. I'm sure this movie is going to be fun. It's also set at Christmas. Christmas horror is always extra fun. Yeah. Like, there, what else is there to say about Terrifier? If you watch this channel, you probably either have seen Terrifier or at least know of Terrifier and have opinions on the concept. Uh, I haven't seen any of them yet. I really want to get around to watching them. But I, I just don't haven't. remember if I watched the first one. I think I might have that or I watched the other one where he or not the other one but the movie where he art the clown makes an appearance yeah it's uh, uh all hallows eve was the... yeah i'm almost positive i've seen all hallows eve i might have watched terrifier mm. haven't seen the second uh, heard good things though, yeah so heard nothing but good things yeah mm. uh then we have i've heard that if anything the two i've heard everything that people's complaints with one were no longer there and two like it was a better made movie in a lot of the ways people didn't like one so but it also is really long which I don't like long movies, in general. Mm. Um, then we have Thread, an insidious tale. Yeah, another insidious, I'm... an insidious spinoff. Um, and we have really Mandy... ready for them to stop making these movies. To be honest, um, it's got Camille Nanjiani and Mandy Moore. Those Ooh. are good actors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the Insidious movies, and they don't, from the uh, trailers and whatnot I've seen of them, they seem like the type of horror that I am not into. 
And let me just read you the synopsis of what this movie's supposed to be about, because it does sound even more insane than any of the previous ones. Uh, they play a husband and wife who use a spell to travel back in time to prevent their daughter's death, which has worse consequences than imagined. And I'm sure it will be a complete mess, if I can be honest with you. All right. Next it's we a have... time travel horror movie, so, yeah. yeah. Next we have Weapons, a Pedro Pascal is teaming up with the director, Zach Kreger, who, if you don't know who he is, he directed Barbarian. Yeah. Um, Which this is, is a movie. original horror really epic um, that has drawn comparisons to Magnolia. The movie is currently titled Weapons and is meant to star Pedro Pascal while filming... Is meant to star Pedro P Pascal while filming... Okay. Is there mentioning the things he's filming? I guess from the era of while he was filming both The Mandalorian and The Last of Us. Okay. I guess... It also has the worst person in the world star, Renate Rinsev, attached as a co-star. Um, I've heard good things about Barbarian, and I love Pedro Pascal, so I'm intrigued. Yeah, I will be watching this for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now a movie that most people are probably not into, but I'm into, baby. So we got Woody <laughs> the Pooh, Blood, and Honey too. <laughs> most people didn't ask for it, but it's coming. Woo! Tigger and Owl are being added, baby. They have a bunch more money. I think the first movie was off, built off of like, ugh, like ten thousand, and this has like a million, or like something of that nature. Like, cause this movie, the first movie, did so well. Like, they actually have they have a budget. They've updated a lot of like the prosthetics look better now and stuff. Which I don't know how I feel about that. Honestly, I kind of loved how cheap they looked. But yeah, there is no official release date, but it's expected to be next year. I'm excited. The first one was stupid fun. I honestly it don't was. understand how, even in the horror community, how much hate that movie got. Yeah, I think people took it way too seriously. I don't know. Like, I just I went in and just enjoyed my time, which is what I was hoping for, and I got it. I got yeah. exactly what I wanted out of the first one, a stupid fun time. So I hope yeah. this is another <laughs> stupid fun time. But also, the horror community hates on movies like Jason X and a lot of other stupid fun time movies that I also enjoy. So. Yeah. I really don't know what people were expecting from the Winnie the Pooh horror movie, yeah. if I can be honest with you. <laughs> but I'm excited. There's not really much else to say. Yeah. Uh, it's the same director. Uh, and then, But with more Winnie the Pooh cast. Somehow, so I don't know why this is the last for? thing on the list. Um, maybe it's alphabetical? Oh, it is alphabetical. Mm. We have sure Witchboard. Um, another entry... Exciting entry lies with Witchboard, a reimagining of the classic 1986 horror movie. Um, who do we got involved? We have Madison Eisman as the star. Stranger Things breakout Jamie Campbell Bauer plays the occult expert. Who's that? Bauer. I, I enjoy myself some Stranger Things. Oh, it's oh, uh, Vecna. With the, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, he plays the occult expert hired to try and save her. The horror movie remake comes from the director Chuck Russell of Nightmare Dream Warriors. Warriors 3, Dream Warriors, and the Blob remake. Interesting. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> 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 All right. I was, I was like, ah, a remake of a movie I haven't even heard that much about? Okay. But then... Ha, who's, do I know Madison Eisman as well? Is this like a movie where everyone I know is like, oh, that person? I probably. Know, probably. Eisman. Uh, no, I don't know anything she's done. Oh, yeah, I recognize her. She's done a lot of movies I have not seen. Uh, she's. I. She's an animal. I feel like she was a Disney Channel star before she got into like movie movies. Oh yeah, she's a Nocturne. Uh. Goosebumps 2, Jumanji. She's apparently in the I Know What You Did Last Summer TV show. But either way, I I really like Jamie Campbell, Campbell Bauer, even if I didn't remember who he was. And the director of Nightmare on Elm Street Dream, 3 Dream Warriors is enough to get me probably into any movie. Uh, <laughs> that's a great movie. And yeah, I'm intrigued. There has been our uh, What to Expect in Horror next year. There you go. Portion of the podcast. Um, now, back to our traditional questions. Chris, what were your general <clears throat> thoughts on this second year of Horror Boys? Uh, well, 
Yeah, uh, it's been a it's a rough year. Uh, all it, was, yeah, it was yeah, it, it was all over the board. It started off like any other year, right on like we were going, we were going. We honestly at the beginning, middle of the year, we started doing. Sorry, we started doing a thing that I won't say, but Chris will say. Horror Boys Theater, um, which I think really elevated the podcast. Um, but then I had a. I mean, without even really a better word, I, bro- I broke down. Um, I couldn't handle the way we were doing the podcast. It was too much stress on me. So we kind of just... The podcast was on life support. It almost died. Uh, let's be real. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, earlier, like a month ago now, um, we found a format that I actually think really will work. We just... Uh, scheduling at this you know holiday season has been a lot more rough. Yeah, um, it has and been. There's been sicknesses and... Different, tons of different reasons why we weren't able to film more podcasts, but um, yeah, it's this yeah. this end the ha- second half of this year has been rough. Um, I will uh, say, yeah, I do like the new format for the podcast a lot. I am very excited to see how that's going to to pan out in twenty twenty four. Yeah, um, and especially I think with it being a us me taking the bullet and admitting that I can't do it even weekly and saying, hey, let's do it every other week. I think is going to help. Um, oh yeah it i think so too it was something i didn't want to do because i just didn't like the idea of doing it because i want to give people more content i, I want to i wish i could give people this podcast twice a week because there's so many horror movies i'd love to get through but right now we're just not <laughs> yeah. at a point where we that's feasible that. um so we're gonna switch down to it every other week like we said the top of the podcast and yeah so my thoughts on this year was oh boy was it a rough one um but also being genuinely i think the first half of this year was the best the podcast ever was um yeah um and then it's valid. it was the worst it ever was uh, <laughs> it was the best of times and, and it was, it the, was the, worst the worst of times um truly but yeah um next question which i'm sure chris will need to pull up in google which i will also need to do um, oh. what is your favorite episode of this year basically chris i can tell you it's anything since chucky gotcha uh hold on i gotta yeah i gotta bring that up uh and uh search for boys um well while he does this i'm gonna try to think what was my favorite episode episode it was probably. Mm, ooh. Favorite episode this year. I think it might just have to be bats. I, I don't know. I just really enjoyed the format of the the, the podcast. Fair. Generally speaking, it felt a lot more natural. I'm gonna go with Final Destination One. Ooh. I really loved just us both complaining about how bad the dialogue was but also loving the movie and how bad the dialogue was yeah um it was a terrible 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 dialogue yeah it's so bad um <laughs> man maybe i should grow my facial hair back out <laughs> i also feel like there was some movie that i liked that you hated that we watched this past year that you liked that i hated yeah and we had a very back and forth me getting angry with how negative you were being on a movie. But I don't know what it was. I mean, it doesn't sound... Yeah, no, it you know, sounds accurate. ...off reality, but I, I don't know what of these movies it would be. Yeah, I don't either. Um, uh, oh, it might have been Halloween 4. You weren't a... F- oh, yeah. You were complaining no, a lot Halloween about Halloween 4, 4 and it was making me mad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because you do love Halloween Four. One of my favorite and movies. I thought of all time. it was just all right. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's it. It could be something else. I don't know, but I love that whenever that happens. But I will say, I really, I also enjoy any of the like. Probably Reanimator was like the first time we really did Horror Boys Theater, which is now gone. Sorry. Oops, I said it. Sorry, guys. Oops. Uh, um, but because of the way we're changing the podcast, it just isn't something we do anymore. Um, except for like maybe quick, really quick intercuts here or there. If a dialogue is so bad or so good, we have to bring it up. But, um, I do really love the era where that was a thing where we had that every like full on horror boys theater 
Um, so any any episode with that could also be on the list of my favorite episodes. And now favorite arc. Favorite arc oh, from I, this year. From this year, I believe uh, arcs we have this year were Chucky, um, Final Destination. Chucky was this year. That's crazy. Yeah. Idle Hand. Oh, no, that's a one-off. Um, that's more one-offs. Um, then we did... I know what you did last time. Reanimator. Summer, Reanimator and Halloween, like, the first half of it. I mean, it's, it's pretty... It's pretty obvious. Chucky, like, hands down, there's really not... Well, there's one clear down in there, but everything else is, like, pretty, uh, pretty top tier. I think that movie's great. Yeah, the movie, the show's also great. Uh, watch it all, guys. Yeah, if you watch haven't, all if you got some time, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna cheat time, and I'm gonna do what we did at the time, which I'm going to include Chucky in my answer. But I'm going to say the Devin Sawa arc of mm, all of the anime. Chucky films. Or, oh, and Idle Hands <laughs> and Final Destination, ending That's with Idle true. Hands. <laughs> Because those all somewhat connected back to Devon Sawa. That is my favorite arc. The Devon Sawa arc. The Devon Sawa arc. Devon Sawa arc. Yep. Um, favorite bit slash joke from this year. Or I guess if it was something from last year, but you just really appreciated this more this year. I don't really remember any of our... Well, I guess Horror Boys Theater. I think yeah. that's my answer, too. Not yeah. me not saying that's it and making you say it. It comes to mind. <laughs> I think that's really the only new bit. Yeah. Well, there you guys go. Um, so that's the my answer. Horror Boys, to you. Horror Boys Theater. Bit of the year. Um, now, before we get to the second half of this podcast, we and also finish... made it rest in peace. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, we got two <laughs> more questions to end out the old school version of this podcast, end of that's your right. podcast, which is what's your achievable goals for next year? growth i want to grow yeah yeah would, would like more people to sorry no actually no i'm gonna i'm gonna have eyes and ears on this podcast i'm gonna have a different answer for this year ah! consistency uh because oh. this last half of this year it was rough um yeah i want to get back to every other week this podcast comes out every other week for you guys yeah, um for sure every other week no i mean that's what it's gonna be we're just gonna say that for now yeah um every other week maybe by the end of the year and we'll be at a point where we can switch that up but for now Every other week, I want to give you guys this podcast every other week. Um, I really want to get back to consistency. Uh, I stand by my reasoning for why I had to not, but it doesn't change the fact that I feel like part of me feels like crap that I did drop the ball so hard for our audience. So I want to not do that this year. I will also try not to do that. <laughs> See <laughs> Um, now for our dreams for next year, um, that we get hit a thousand listeners every week. That would be insane. Yeah, I know. We'd have to hit. 100 I'll say a hundred listeners every week. I feel like that's because even that'd be crazy. I feel like that's almost an achievable goal. Almost. Uh, and uh, some some more subscribers on our YouTube. Yeah, I'd love to like be able to monetize this. That would be it. Would be nice. Um. But hey, even if people are still just listening on like Spotify or Google yeah, Podcasts no, or whatever, just, we don't need you your money for this. If you want to, you can support us on Patreon. Um, can't promise there's any content that you'll specifically get because you know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, please, please yeah, listen to us. We are literally just support us, I, the, especially with like bats, which only has three views on YouTube right now. I don't know what it looks like on our other podcast e um, uh, on the podcast channels apps on podcast yeah, that's the word on spotify for podcasters that has I... eight plays which is a little mm. under at normal we normally hit about 10 to 11 but mm. we also are really consistently our re- new format we also <laughs> are consistently releasing so that's true that's going to hurt the podcast yeah um, consistency is key in the game um but yeah uh, that's the end of what we normally did on the podcast, but I don't know if you guys remember earlier this year, I teased, there's going to be a new thing at that's the right. end of your podcast. And that is 
The Horror Boys National Treasures Induction Ceremony. Woo! Every year we are going to induct people into the Horror Boys National Treasures. You no longer can just get put in. The last people to be grandfathered in were the Dorifs. Um, so far we have Matthew Lillard, the original Horror Boy alum National Treasure. No, he wasn't. Sorry. No, that was Tony Todd. Tony Todd, Matthew Lillard, Brad Dorif, Fiona Dorif. Those so are the current national fans. treasures who were, you know, grandfathered in of just being like, hey, this person's a national treasure, and we just did it. Um, now it's an annual thing, starting this is the first time. So I guess it's actually technically not even annual until we do it next year, but yeah. whatever. It's Why first don't you thing. go ahead and lay down the rules? Yes, yeah, so the rules the of this are going to be, me and Chris both have a list of five people. Um, so the way this is going to work, we're kind of just going to spoil what our five people are pretty quickly because we're both going to read off our list back and forth one by one. And if there's any that are on both of our list, they mm -hmm. automatically go in. And then if they're and not on both of our lists, we will... We have to make an argument. We have to make an argument for why they deserve it. Even if the other person already thinks that they're you agree, we will let the other person give the argument for the sake of this being actual content. Yeah. Um, so yeah, actually, I guess we'll still go one by one, but if we hit one where the other person has it, they say it then. Okay. Um, so I'll let you go first. Gotcha. Uh, the first on my list is probably someone you would not have expected to be on this list at all because they've only starred in one movie, mm. uh, that we've watched so far. I feel like I know who this is. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's not at all uh, who I saw coming. <laughs> Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, well, it's Ryan Reynolds uh, because I think his work in The Voices is so phenomenal. Uh, okay. I just love him as like an actor. It's no no surprise to anyone. Uh, but I think he plays like this mentally ill character incredibly well, uh, and it is definitely one of my favorite horror movies of all time because uh, it is a horror comedy uh, and I, uh, I love uh, me a some pretty Ryan. phenomenal I love Ryan Reynolds I think he did a good job in the voices I'm not 100% sold on him being a national treasure though I'm mm. going to shelve him currently because I might need him for bargaining power in a little bit oh okay <laughs> Well, uh, who do who do you got first? Well, my on first one, I, don't, I hopefully will not need bargaining power. Um, mm -hmm. I have the one, the only, the father of Chucky himself, Don mm. Mancini. He has been okay. around since day one. He w had his hand in literally creating Chucky in every facet. He has been the brain behind that franchise, good or bad, since day one. Interesting. Um, uh, he is my answer. It's Don Mancini. I love Don Mancini. I love how just openly just queer and loving it he is. Like, he doesn't care. He's going to put a bunch of queer characters in. Doesn't care if it pisses off people who are stupid and bigoted. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I'm down to be part of the rainbow cult with him. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. I, I really hadn't considered putting directors in the mm -hmm. national and treasure inductees but it makes a lot of sense and uh, i think he has a very valid place in the in the national treasure are you inductees. saying that he he is he is getting that you are agreeing i that would he's say so yes yeah, and i i feel like i there's got to be another person on this list who oh it's I've... my it's my final one. Oh, okay cool <laughs> uh, so my second i don't think you'll have any any I trouble him. i don't want him <laughs> Oh, David Arquette, you, you don't want in the National Treasure? Oh, no, he's in, because he's on my list. Oh, okay, yeah, I kind of suspected my, that He was my next case. person. David Arquette, okay, 100% cool. in, without a shadow of a doubt. David Arquette <laughs> deserves it. Uh, I will give the little spiel. Um, he is such a good actor, playing Dewey um, in all five of the Scream movies he is in. He does. He is the heart of those movies, in a lot of ways. Especially more Scream so, 2 yeah. on. Scream 1, he's lost the heart, but... Yeah. He is the heart of that franchise. Um, it's kind of a shame that they killed him, honestly, just that because is. he was such a important character to that franchise. Yeah, one hundred percent, David Arquette. 
was on my list. He was my next person. So <clears throat> I guess go again because you took my next one. Yeah, well, I might do it again. Sorry about it. Mm. Uh, Jeffrey Combs. No, not on my list. Oh, no, not on your list at all. Not on I'm my surprised. List. Not for this year. I, I had a very specific group of people I wanted for this year. Very, very surprised, honestly. But I 100% would love to hear your reasoning for why he should be in here. I think Jeffrey Combs is an actor who doesn't know how to give 100% whenever he's on the screen. To not uh, give and... 100% is what you meant to say. Yeah. You didn't say that. You just said he doesn't know how to give 100%. No. Oh, well, I spoke. He doesn't know how to not yes. give 100% whenever he's on the screen. He eats up every scene that he's in, even when it's uh, poopy. I'll always know what you did last summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, playing the, the, the receptionist. I mean, listen, uh, you're a reanimator as well. That whole franchise is campy No, absolutely. Goodness. Reanimator is like what put him he, on this list. Well, campy goodness, but he plays that like he's a thespian, because he is. But yeah. like... <laughs> Uh, and of course, he was originally put on my radar uh, thanks to uh, what was that movie? Doctor we... Mordred. Yes, Doctor Mordred. Uh, God, what a <laughs> what a time! But he absolutely carried that movie all the way through to the end. It was a that is um, one of the not great movies at all, but his he treats it like it is. Yeah, he is truly a thespian. Yeah, as I you know almost accidentally did before we gave the spiel on why he should be in here. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes. Yippee! He is one. All right, who's your third? My third is technically cheating. Oh. Because it's three people. Hmm. Is it KNB FX? It is KNB FX group. Hmm. I would like to nominate Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger as the KNB FX group. They have been involved in almost every episode. Not really, but they have been in probably more episodes than any other person due to just the amount of work they've done and their work is always amazing yeah the times we've mentioned k and b effects uh in the in the crediting of any given horror boys podcast is truly astonishing probably over well over half i don't know about uh, that but it's close it's it's close yeah uh it's yeah, no, 100% they okay. deserve to be national treasures. Yeah, they, I, I will say it is a little bit of cheating. Maybe I should have had to give three spots for each of them, but I, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. I'm putting all of them in as one. They are the this was wrong to separate the three. Yeah. All right, who is your fourth? This is going to be another person who I don't think you'll have expected to be on the list at all. Okay. And that's totally fair. Uh, but Mary Elizabeth Winstead of uh final destination three i believe yeah no it's final destination three uh again another actress who i think just eats up every scene that she's in okay um and just has phenomenal acting and is probably the reason that is my favorite final destination movie aside from of course the uh God, what's his name uh 13th year oh uh ryan merriman yeah ryan merriman uh, they definitely carry it together, but I think she absolutely uh, pours her heart out in that movie. And if you don't think so, that I understand. Uh, but I am a huge Mary Elizabeth Winstead uh, fan. If I can be honest. I think what I'm going. I I'm, I think I hate to do this. I hate to be the one to do this. Are you going to shoot me down? I am going to fully shoot her down because I think she did do good in that movie. But I don't. I think to be able to be nominated personally off of one movie, she did not have that groundbreaking performance mm. for me. I'm really her. sorry, um, but I'm not even putting her on the fence uh, or on the shelf. I think is what I called it. Uh, you did. You did say the shelf. Yes. I, I. I think she personally. I don't think she makes the shelf. Maybe you gotta Are find you? me another horror movie she's in where she does another good job. And there's a chance, but because oh, that's another thing we haven't mentioned. Someone can only be nominated three times. If yep. they are nominated yep. three times and they get rejected three times, they are done. They are out. They can never be a national treasure, even if they put on the greatest performance of all time. <laughs> um, but I am sorry. It's I understand. No. It's a no for me. I understand. It's a no for me. I understand. No. All right. Who's your Who's your fourth? Oh, my fourth is um, an absolute 
artist. Um, a, a man who helped create some of the greatest horror movies of all time over multiple generations of horror. Um, it's the legend himself. It is Wes Craven. Um, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he created my favorite movie of all time. Uh, he also created Nightmare on Elm Street, which, even though I think it is somewhat overrated, I still think is a great movie. Um, he also yeah. was the only other Nightmare on Elm Street two were involved in were three and New Nightmare, two of my other favorites of that franchise. Uh, he was involved in the first four Scream movies, which I think are all good. When your worst movie in your franchise is Scream 3, you know you have a great franchise. Mm. Um, and that's not even to mention, like, he also did Last House on the Left, which I have not seen, but is a groundbreaking horror movie in its own right. He did The Hills Have Eyes. He Like, he is a legend of horror. Yeah, that is fair. So Wes Craven is my fourth nominee. Yeah, Oof, that's a... It's a tough one. Oh, okay. But uh, it's not. Uh, yeah. yeah. I will say it's yeah, a, throw him in there. I think if you said no to Wes Craven, the podcast is over. <laughs> oh, that's, I'll be that's honest. <laughs> entirely, entirely fair. Ooh, man. I had a fifth. Oh. But again, I don't know if I... Hmm. I'm rethinking. Okay. I'm rethinking. Okay. Because oh, I really desperately want to put Stephen Yun in there uh, off of his performance in Mayhem. And just generally speaking, I've seen him in a plethora. Mm. But I don't know if it's enough to call him a a horror boy's national treasure. That's you know? fair. I could, I don't, I'm not going to um, give you my answer on what it would be if you picked him. but you know, Because he is a phenomenal actor. Sure. One of my favorite actors of modern day. But I again, yeah. I don't know if it's enough to justify putting him okay. in the Horror Boys. So who are you changing it to? Oh man, that is that is the question of the lifetime, <laughs> and I don't know who I, I would put in instead. I'll be honest; I know it. who's left on my list, and there are at least one huge omission that I can't believe we have missed. Neither of us have put him on our top five. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I think I know who, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it? Is it the Is it the legend? Freddy Krueger? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. And so that's who I was going to sub him in for. <laughs> okay. Uh, you do whatever is in your heart, though, because that's the point of this. Yeah. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Because he is... Robert England is such a character whenever he plays Freddy Krueger, like True. undeniably, absolutely a, a personality. Whether you love him or hate him, I don't know how. Honestly, I don't know how you could hate him. Yeah, I, I really don't either. He is truly iconic, uh, and so for that reason, I think I have to put Robert England oh, as our we did it. as our we national did it. treasure. We did not put Robert England in. Yes, one hundred percent agreed. <laughs> Has, I, yeah. <laughs> see, I didn't put him on my list. I was like, oh, that'll be on Chris's list for sure. Someone like a Robert yeah. England. I don't have to worry about Robert England. Yeah, he is probably one of my favorite horror characters to yeah. ever exist. It... Okay, good, good, good. We, we saved it there. Uh, so so we're going to put him in? Oh, <laughs> Robert, England, I'm Robert England is going in 100%. Yeah. Um, uh, can, I, can I try to predict who your number five is? Sure. So I've got a pretty good feeling about it. Okay. I think it's going to be Kevin Williamson. It's not. It's not? <laughs> why would I... Why would I... Remember, the fifth one is the one that I was waiting to use. Oh, it's a leverage. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Kevin, Kevin Williamson would Kevin be Williamson is a first ballot... Well, I guess second ballot, because he didn't make it in year one. But yeah, he's... For, uh, for next year? He could definitely be on that list for next year, as long with... Uh, spoiler, Kane Hodder will probably be on my list next year. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> no, no, no. My fifth... Um is a person who, in my opinion, gives their all in every scene they are in. Um, I think she's a legend. Um, I think the movies she is in, movies and television she is in, would not be the same without her. It's none other than Jennifer Tilly. That 
is very, very fair. And I'm willing and to put Ryan fair. Reynolds in if you give me Jennifer Tilly. All right, let's put them both through, guys. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yay, yeah, 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 we did it, guys. <laughs> God, I, I need Ryan Reynolds in more horror movies, though. Oh, but yeah, he really does need to be in more. Because he, he, I'll be honest, it, it is a stretch to put him in as a national treasure. It is. Um, uh, but yeah, for the class of 2023, we have, in alphabetical order, just to be fair, <laughs> David Arquette. <clears throat> Don Mancini. Jeffrey Combs, Jennifer Tilly, the collective known as the KB Effects Group, Robert Freddy himself, England, Ryan Reynolds, and the father of horror in many a way, Wes Craven. Ooh. I think that is a pretty gosh darn great first class. I would say so. Um, I think I am very happy that you pivoted to Robert Englund because if he was not in there, I think that is a shame on both of us, honestly. Yeah, um, a crime. Uh, but yeah, um, there is our first induction class. They are joining the likes of Tony Todd, Stu Mocker himself, why am I blanking on his real name? <laughs> I love the man. Help me out, Chris, please. Wait, huh? Who's st who plays Stu Mocker? Why am I not able to remember his name? Oh, oh God, Matthew Lillard. Thank you. <laughs> you you oh. gave it to me for a second. <laughs> Brad Dourif and Fiona Dourif, along with these eight amazing inductees. I am sorry that two of yours did not make it. I don't remember who the second... Oh, no, it's not. One of yours didn't make it. We both had David yeah. Arquette. Yeah. There was only a max of nine that would have went in this year. I am sorry for Mary Elizabeth Winstead fans. Um, she's got to do a little bit more, and Horror Boys specifically, to That's true. deserve and the national we probably franchise. probably won't watch some of her other horror movies, <laughs> just knowing <laughs> often. Uh, it's, it's Cloverfield Lane, guys. Uh, which she is also pretty good in. <laughs> the problem with Cloverfield Lane is you have to get through Cloverfield, which just doesn't sound fun for the podcast. <laughs> it's actually probably one of my favorite found footage movies. Yeah, but I hate found footage, and it's a giant monster movie, which are already kind of hard to watch on the podcast because there's just so much chaos. Yeah, that's fair. It's hard Understand. to describe what happened, but maybe. Who knows? Maybe she'll get the chance to be seen again. This has been the... 2023 year end review for horror boys i have been austin joined as always we will see you in two weeks did i say joined yeah. as always by chris i think i said joined as always and then said we'll see you in two weeks joined yeah. as always by chris uh it's Hi. chris um <laughs> we love you guys Bye 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 bye